Let's get to the topic of tonight's conversation, everyone. And we shall be going to or your state in the southwest region of the country. So, a lot of uh, candidates, heavyweights in their own right, are in the race for the number one seat in or your state. But interestingly, a lot of them are men. But one person who is a woman, perhaps younger than some of them, had come out and she believes that she has what it takes to be the governor of Oyo State. Meanwhile, Oyo State has the capital Ibado, perhaps one of the largest city in the country, with perhaps one of the largest GDP in the country. Tonight, I'm being joined by the candidate of the National Interest for the NIP, Mrs. Bolanle Sharumi Aliyu. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank you for having me, Mr. Shell. Audacious, isn't it? Pardon? It's audacious, isn't it, that you want to become governor of Oyo State? <laughs> Why is it? It's natural. A lot of people will <laughs> ask your credential. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have what it takes to be the governor of your state? I definitely have. I have what it takes to be the governor of the state. Um, looking at the so-called ruling parties, uh, their candidates as well. Uh, one of them is a businessman. I've been in business since you're 21. The other one was a civil servant. So none of them have actually you know, held an elective post before, both APC, PDP, and myself. And uh, currently, I'm sure you've heard about the aligning going on. So now the contest is between NIP, which is my party, APC, and PDP on Saturday. So you are not uh, aligning yourself with uh, some <laughs> others? No. Because um, we understand that uh, perhaps the Lawakala uh, is joining forces. We understand that some other mm. political parties are coming under mm. the PDP, uh, forming alliance against Adelabu and all of that. Mm. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Adelabu um, um, and uh, the PDP candidate, uh, Makinde, he's not a stranger to the race. Do you think you have what it takes to defeat these men in the battlefield on Saturday? I do. Um, like I said earlier, I'm a businesswoman, uh, a mother. Uh, I studied social work and welfare, psychology, sociology, and social policy. Uh, grew up in Ibadan, born in Ibadan. Uh, went to primary school there, went to secondary school there. And, um, you know, I've been to over 350 something wards. My voice is going because I'm on rallies. You know, tomorrow is, uh, is the last day for our rallies. And I've, you know, I've, I've interacted with the people and I've found out what the problems are and I know it's something that can be solved. I'll give you an example. In my state, uh, last year's budget, let me be accurate, the governor of the state spent, where is it, 43.1 billion building roads. However, he spent 5.2 billion on the education of the whole state. And he spent 3.2 billion on the health of the state. That is why they haven't got what it takes to be the governor. I will do better than that because I will not pump all the money into building roads. In a developed nation, the recommendation is about 20% of the budget, not 3% not 4% of a budget. That is why you'll find the schools till today. Some children have to sit on the floor. Uh, no, no, no science labs in the classrooms. You'll find in some wards, there are no health, you know, primary health centers. Some women have to walk or, I don't, I don't even know how, how they get to the, to the nearest clinics, two hours away for them from, you know, from one ward to the other ward. You know, imagine if there's an emergency or imagine when they're having a child. And that's why all these uh, uh, new mortality rates will never go down. Right, a woman needs a to moment. govern. You, you were talking about the issues of education, and uh, there are about three, over 300 secondary schools in uh, your state, about 1,500 uh, primary, um, uh, uh, primary schools in uh, your state. Uh, you did mention uh, just the quota that should go into the, uh, from the budget into this area. What are you going to do differently? Okay. Number one. I will ensure that I put in about 15 to 20 percent on the education of the state, not what they're doing currently, 3 percent of the budget. I will ensure that we widen the tax net. Let me tell you, if people do not trust the government, they would not want to contribute towards generating income for the state. I'm talking about the informal sector. We need to bring them in. We can't be relying on uh, federal allocation and the two point something billion they make yearly in your state. If you bring in the mechanics, the tailors, uh, farmers, etc., register their businesses for them, encourage them, support them, and then they pay a contribution. How far, do you, how far do you hope to raise the tax uh, 
income in uh, <laughs> the IGR? I'll give you an example of where I'm going to generate a lot of money. For example, in four towns in Oyo State, we can produce enough uh, cassava to serve the whole of Nigeria and also to be able to export it abroad. Then we're also going to bring out ethanol from out of the cassava, and that will generate us about, I think, about $50 billion yearly. Um, we have so many things in the land in but, Oyo but State. But numerically, in, in specifically, how much do you think you can generate because you were talking about the, uh, the monthly, low generation monthly, IGR. Mm -hmm. monthly, monthly about double to start with. We're going to double what they're doing right now to start with. And then gradually over the months. Because I'm a businesswoman. Most of these politicians have never done a day's job in their life. You also they said spent you're, 30 going to, years you're going as to, career politicians. You're going to train over 100,000 people in vocational studies. That's my own uh, personal level. I do a lot of charity. Um, I started an organization about 18 years ago where I go into orphanage homes, you know, renovate their homes for them because it's not about food alone for orphanages. You'll find they sleep, you know, roughly. You'll find they have no mosquito nets, etc. So I registered, sorry, I signed up uh, with DSI Gates. This is an organization that trains, you know, people to train 100,000 people for me, irregardless of elections, win or lose. However, we're going to win. Who's sponsoring you? God. <laughs> Where are you getting these monies from? God. <laughs> really? Yes. You have um, a if, deep pocket if, <laughs> to run this election if, as if, compared to the other big parties. They're not, what, what makes you think they're big parties? Because they have enough funds to go on social media. Because they can flash the cash on various TV, TV platforms. My brother, let's wait till that Saturday. Then we'll know whether they are a big party. Because let me tell you the history of your state. They've been winning elections with about 300,000 votes. Over 300,000 votes. However, you have a population of close to 6 to 7 million people. That's appalling. Why would you have 300,000 votes and you're now proud to be the governor of a state? That means they don't love you. So you if are, they love you, you should have a nice chunk. You're banking on about how many votes? A million. Really? <laughs> yes. You think you can win this election? God willing, if it's my time, I am going to win. Because I, 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 I've checked all the, all the other candidates out. And I found that out of all of them, I am more compassionate. And I, am, I have more fire inside me. And I have more, no, I have a lot of integrity. I have no, what's it called, no corrupt godfathers behind me. However, I have great people of Nigeria and abroad that have been supporting me. If you check my social media handle, Bola Sarumi Aliyu, you'll find that a lot of people have been funding me. People have been sending we, money we, we, we all over. We need to close, Mrs. Sarumi Aliyu. <laughs> and I'll just give you 10 seconds to wrap uh -huh. up. You've talked about the issue of education, health, uh, We will revamp, right? yeah. We're going to well, revamp then, the education. If there is one thing that you will do within uh -huh. the first three months, mm -hmm. you should you be elected, what would that be? 10 seconds, please. I will do data collection. No government of the day has ever actually found out if you are unemployed, disabled, widowed, uh, 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 etc. We will do data collection, like how we have in England. My mom is English, you know, and the country works for the people, United Kingdom. You contribute monthly and you get your free health care. Why can't we do that in the state, you know? And the well, people of your state, do not sell your votes. Time is money. Let's We're out of one time. God has chosen. And I wish you the very best. Thank the you. candidate of the NIP, Bolalisa Rumiali. Thank you so much for coming on tonight on Politics. Today. Thank you, Mr. I wish Chair. you the very best. Well, that's our, our program tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. The election is coming closer by the day. Uh, tomorrow, the last day for campaigns. It's going to be an interesting program tonight. Don't miss it, everyone. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye.